Hello Internet, I'm still alive and here and talking to you again on YouTube, so I hope you've all been well, it has been a very long time, but this is um, again an updated video, battles will come again in the future, you know, I'll talk about that in just a moment, but uh, in this video I'm going to talk about um, this season, you know, how it went, how my, my hopes were for this season, um, and the future too, so the future of me playing VGC, the future of uh, this YouTube channel, uh, future of, of my life in general perhaps as well too, who knows, but um, it's been a wild season, uh, it really has, and in my last update video as well, uh, I think I was mentioning that, you know, I'm 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 a big boy now, uh, I had a big birthday this year, and um, you know, I wanted to celebrate basically, I want to go to all four of the international tournaments, and I want my day two invite, because I've been playing this game for a, a good while now, and you know, you know, I've had some some good world results as well too. But I've never had the day two invite, the paid trip to worlds, which has always been a thorn in my side because I've always felt like you know I I I've at least deserved one of them, at least one of them. Um, you know, I finished in in well in the top sixteen of Europe in thirteen, but didn't get it. You know, rules have always changed. I've always managed to avoid a paid trip. Um, you know, in some way, but. Um, this year, you know, my work, you know, because I do work full time as well, they've been very, very good to me. So, you know, thank you to my employers for, uh, you know, I doubt they watch this, but, you know, thank you to them anyway for letting me have the amount of time off that they that they have to let me go to these tournaments. Um, thank you to Jamie Boyd as well, too, who uh, came with me on, I think, all of the foreign tournaments that I, all, almost all of the foreign tournaments that I went to this year. Uh, he went to a few more of the European regionals that I didn't go to, but um, pretty much all of the, most of the ones that I went to abroad, you know, he was there as well too, you know, sharing hotel rooms and everything with as well. So, you know, he's made it, he's made the experience better as well too. Um, but I guess this whole thing, this whole season started um, in Anaheim last year where Worlds was, because I did enter the Anaheim Open. Um, I got some points from that. That was a tournament where my, my Tapu Lele was disqualified because I wrote Hidden Power on the team sheet. But um, I got a top 8 too, got some points. Um, there was the Bilbao special in Spain as well, where I got uh, top 8 and got some points. And the London International, Europe's um, International Championship. Um, I got 100 championship points from that as well too. So even before the BGC 18 rule set came in, um, I had, you know, quite a lot of points. You know, probably over 200 or so at that point. You know, a decent amount of points. So, um, you know, at that point, I was like, okay, yes, I can definitely do this. And um, we went for it. So um, bearing in mind this is before um, Intimidate on Incineroar was around as well too. Um, I built that Jinx team, so Adrenaline Orb Jinx, because uh, Landorus was really the main, I suppose maybe Salamence a bit as well, the main Intimidate Pokemon out there. And uh, you know Jinx with Adrenaline Orb, you know it could one shot Scarf and Outspeed Scarf, can one shot um, Assault Vest Landorus, most Assault Vest Landorus, unless it was ridiculously invested. Uh, Landorus as well too. So, you know, I really liked that with skill swap for the Volcarona and uh, Tyrant and Tyrant and everything on that team as well. So, um, yeah, I really liked that team. Uh, got quite a few points from two mid-season showdowns in London. Uh, went off to Australia, um, got some points in that tournament as well. And got some points, got top four even, in the Malmo regional in Sweden. Um, all within sort of three weeks of each other. So, you know, that was a whirlwind of three weeks. Uh, you know, there was all the travelling involved, you know, going to the other side of the world as well too, so that was manic, but um, got a lot of points. Uh, thank you to Zoe and her parents for, uh, you know, putting me and Boy up for a few days. Uh, the Buzzwall clan, clam as well, the, the clang, <laughs> the clan of Buzzwalls as well too, uh, who let us stay in their house for a few days, and uh, uh, Daniel Walker as well, who actually it's his birthday today, so thank you, thank, thank you and happy birthday, Dan, for uh, giving us a bit of a tour of, um, you know, your part of Australia, and, uh, uh, you know, you know, Everyone made that trip such a, a a fantastic experience. It was just amazing there. Really, really, really good. The after party was fun too as well. Um, you know, so it was a fantastic, fantastic experience. Um, so sitting quite good in the um, you know championship points table at that point. Um, Intimidate Incinera was released at that point, and you know even now, you know honestly, I I preferred the the format before it came out. Um, I don't really like all the Intimidates and all the fake out and everything around, but uh, I've got to deal with it, haven't I? So um, um, I've, you know, I've earned you know, a lot of points since then, but I've never really been as comfortable in the format as, as before it came out. And there was a big gap between Sydney and Sao Paulo. Um, I didn't really play in many tournaments, not no, not any big tournaments, because there was a few in Europe that, that you know, Boyd and a few of the UK guys went to, but I didn't go to those. 
Um, so Sub Hollow was the big, you know, the next big one where um, I entered with a pretty wacky team actually with um, Vivalon and Persian and Raikou and no fairy resists on the team at all too and I liked the team. Um, I knew it wasn't that solid. I knew it wasn't that good really but you know I was in a good point, a good good position championship points wise and I thought well you know if I don't get anything then I'll just get some more points from some from somewhere else won't I. So I went in with the team and the tournament went <laughs> pretty terribly for me. I went positive you know just <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't know. I didn't get any points from the tournament, but uh, again, the whole trip was fantastic. So, you know, thank you again, Boyd and um, Nathan and Kaylee as well, who we shared a hotel with. Vincent, who I met on that journey as well, you know, properly. And, you know, we had a, a good a good time, you know, in, in a particular evening there as well, too, going out and uh, having some drinks and uh, seeing what Brazil is like um, at night time as well, too. So, um, you know, fantastic experience. I really, really enjoyed it over there. But I didn't get any points. So, um, you know. I thought, okay, fine, you know, I'm still still in a good position. Um, there weren't really too many other events coming up. Um, there was the regional in Sheffield, which um, I was uh, actually thinking about it. I was actually really nervous going into because it, I knew that at that point it was making you know, make or break. I hadn't booked um, the North America International Championship at that point. You know, I thought I probably would go to it anyway, but I hadn't booked it thinking... Well, you know, depending on how this tournament goes, you know, I, I may or may not need to, to, to go anyway. But um, Sheffield Regional started off terribly for me, actually. It was really, really bad. I was using a, um, a variant of my VGC 17 team, as you may remember. I'll show you my teams in a moment. Um, but with, you know, Driftblim and... Um, actually, the, you know, the, the 17 team had Driftblim. That was one of the things I changed off it for, for this team. Um, but with Smurgle and Lele and Katana and Circuitry and all that lot... And um, I did, by some miracle, end up getting points in uh, Sheffield. So that was a massive help. You know, that kept me in the top 16, um, thankfully, as well. Um, there was a meeting in Sheldon in Edinburgh, which I went up for as well. Um, you know, and uh, it's great numbers for that. And uh, got some points. And, um, and uh, I think, yeah, that was like a week, a week before the North America International Championships. So I changed like a, a couple of things. Um, going into that tournament. Again, I'll show you my teams in a moment. Um, and the American tournament was, again, a little bit of a disappointment, you know, to be honest. Uh, it didn't go as well as I'd hoped. There was nine rounds. Um, I finished 6-3, so, you know, sounds quite a flattering finish, really, you know, considering how I felt the run went, 6-3. Uh, and I was just outside of the top 64 points. So, again, I didn't get points. So, um, you know, thankfully, at that point, you know, because some of the the, you know, outsiders, 17th, 18th, 19th, um, one of them, Jens, he went to um, North America, but the others didn't go. You know, even before the tournament started, looking at the player roster, I knew that I'd got my day to win by, but I don't know, it was made a little bit scary by, like, the week before um, the, um, I think it was the same weekend of, or maybe it was between Edinburgh and uh, America. There was, like, a Premier Challenge, um, supposed to be a Premier Challenge in the UK, and the tournament organiser didn't, didn't even turn up. And, like, with 10 more points, I'll show you the table in a moment as well. With 10 more points, I would have been in a, such a such a, a more comfortable position to. But, um, anyway, whatever. Um, I have achieved my day to win by over the moon. So happy. Really, really, really happy. So, I'll show you, actually, um, some of the teams, some of the main teams, or all of the main teams, that I used to um, achieve my uh, my day to win by. So, here we go. Here's his showdown. So, we're starting at the top you know, in the past and going down to um, more recent at the bottom there. So my VGC 17 team at the top there, um, amusingly, as you can see, this um, team that I used at a Premier Challenge and a, a mid-season show in Edinburgh, actually very similar to um, the team that Wolf used in the North America International Championships. Um, he had Landorus, uh, where I had Azumarill. Um, I did like the team, didn't have any grand resists, which is one of the reasons why I kind of went away from it and... Uh, and uh, well, one of the one of one of the one of the reasons of a few, I suppose, why I stopped using that. But I just find it really interesting that he built a team very similar to to what I used at the beginning of the format, and he used it at the end of the format. So that's interesting to note. But this is the team, I suppose. You know, as you can see here, as as I, my cursor can't be seen on here, but the the highlight does. Um, this team is the one that I'm probably most known for for this season. Uh, the Adrenaline of Jinx, the um, slightly more support. 
Lucario, and then set up with Tyranitar, with Vosbrona and Amoongus. Um, really like that team. You know, I'll always remember this team, you know, fondly, really, because it did get me, you know, a decent chunk of my uh, my invite, you know, my day two as well. Um, but, you know, again, with Intimidate on, on Incineroar coming out, it really kind of put this team to bed, and uh, I just moved away from the team. So this is what I used in Sao Paulo. This is the, the wacky team that I was on about with Vivalon and Raikou and Persian and everything. Didn't go too well, but it was a really fun team to use. It was kind of like I tried to go with kind of like a throwback to um, Life and Vreloom in a way, because Vivalon is just like a Vreloom, but with redirection, it gets Rage Powder. And, you know, Hurricanes can hit quite hard as well, too. So um, I kind of went with that. And I didn't enjoy it. Blaziken wasn't even that common at that time as well, either. So it was a bit of a wild team, I guess. But I changed it a little bit for a mid season showdown in London and. Um, came second, I think, in that mid-season show, and they got a decent amount of points when that were lost in the final. Um, but uh, I didn't feel like it was too solid, this kind of archetype, I suppose. So I went back to um, I went back to the past, went back to kind of like a, a more VGC17 kind of style of team, which is quite funny because I really hated VGC17. But um, this team I quite enjoyed using again with Smurgle, with Lele, with Kartana, Zerkatry for Sheffield as well too. I just kind of swapped Drifblim and um, Arcanine out for Clefairy for a bit more support and uh, Mega Blaziken as it was on this team as well too. And for Edinburgh and the North America International Championships, I just basically changed Zerkatry for um, Thunderous and a few other sort of tweaks to the team as well too. So those are the teams that I used. Uh, a bit of a, a wild set of teams I suppose too and this is how the final standings ended up um, really honestly at the beginning of this season I thought okay so you know this is you know, looking at past years as well I thought maybe the top 16 barrier would be about 750 maybe 800 points just to be safe so 800 was really my target for this season but look at that look how many points the top 16 have got I did not expect to be so much competition up there really it was crazy i mean maybe there's been more tournaments this year i don't know i mean i, I mean not to you know say it in a, a, a derogatory way but you know italy have had a lot of tournaments loads of of mid-season showdowns you know in the uk you know you're looking to get a, a premier challenge let alone a mid-season showdown really but um you know so many tournaments so many championship points that these people have earned and it's made it really 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 tough at, at this top end of the uh of the uh um of the table but thankfully as you can see i just squeaked in uh, so thankfully i didn't need any points from um the united states tournament so you know edinburgh has saved me you know all the other tournaments that i went to save me um i did have one more premier challenge free you know like i was saying there was that one that the, the organizer didn't turn up to um which 10 points you know, 12 points, whatever, would have put me so much higher, would have put me into 12th, actually. And, um, and just to the point as well, I, I'm quite surprised that um, Sanvi finished 16th. Like, he won the London tournament, so even an in international winner um, only just squeaked in here as well. Although, you know, he did kind of stop playing. He really just sort of, you know, relied on his, his finish and, um, I suppose like me, just kind of went for the, the, the top 16 finish. Um, Lucas, you know, I do feel bad for Lucas missing out because I do think he deserves a top 16 place as well too. Um, you know, by one point as well too, so quite a dramatic finish really to the end here in Europe. Um, Yuri, you know, fantastic up there in first with a, a million points. Um, and, um, you know, the competition for top four has been quite, um, difficult as well. I mean, who would have thought a top eight in Europe needed, you know, over, over 1,100 points? It's been ridiculous really, but... Um, you know, after all that, you know, I've got my day to invite. There's Nashville to prepare for next month. Um, the teams, I mean, I knew deep down the teams that I was using in Brazil, especially, and maybe the United States a bit, that they weren't really that solid. And, and it didn't really surprise me that much that I didn't get championship points from those tournaments. So I think for Worlds, I'm going to have to maybe build something a little bit more solid or test, just test something a little bit more. Um, rigorously, I suppose, as well. Not just relying on Shodan, because I think for um, Sao Paulo and um, Columbus, the teams that I've used, I've laddered you know, pretty high with on, on Shodan, but 
that's clearly not a, a good indicator. So Battlespot, I'll probably be on there quite a bit more, uh, testing teams and testing whatever, you know, whatever else as well too. Uh, but yeah, Nashville next month. I'm looking forward to looking forward to seeing everyone again. You know, looking forward to the party and everything too. I'm sure there'll be one somewhere. Um, but uh, yeah, really, really enjoyed this season. Really happy to have my day to win by. But the future is, um, you know, always, always surrounding us. And um, this YouTube channel, I am going to be more active on this channel um, because I'm going to say because, and um, you know, it's. It's been fantastic for me this year, you know, again, thank you to my employer, I can't remember if I, if I thanked them or not, they don't watch this anyway, but, you know, thank you to my employer for all the time off that, you know, I had to, to go to these tournaments. You know, I'm not going to be able to do this every year, and I'm getting a bit older now, I've got more things that I want to start doing with my life, I guess, and um, I don't want to be sitting on showdown, you know, all the time, and, you know, stressing over teams, and all the rest of it, so... In the future, um, I don't think I'm ever going to be going after a day two invite again. But in the future, I'll probably just try, you know, for a day one invite and, you know, just sort of go from there and just, just take it easy with Pokemon, I suppose. Um, but because of that, um, you know, I'm not going to be so, uh, you know, wound up about, you know, keeping teams hidden and all the rest of it too. So I'm going to be a lot more free on YouTube to just record and do videos and... Um, uh, you know, soon, you know, maybe, I'm not sure if I will before Worlds, but, uh, you know, if I have the time before Worlds, but definitely after Worlds, um, I will be doing some videos with the teams that I've used this season to, uh, you know, show them off and show how they worked and, uh, you know, hopefully you'll enjoy looking through those as well, you know. So, you know, after Worlds, when, when, when everyone, you know, when the peak of interest has, has disappeared, that's when Barry's around to do some videos, always, always missing the, the point of interest there, but, uh, I'll, I'll do some videos and hopefully you enjoy them anyway and uh, um, you can look through those teams and uh, and uh, see how they worked. But um, yeah, hopefully next year, uh, I'm hoping it is going to be uh, the restricted Pokemon allowed, you know, with Lunala and Sol Galeo and, um, you know, that big dragon thing and, you know, the, the white, the thing that's fast and is, is psychic and dragon. You know, all those things, you know, I'll obviously learn about them a lot more if it is the format, but all those things. I'm looking forward to those. I get to use Xerneas again, get to use Rayquaza again. Um, no Dark Void, though, unfortunately. But, um, well, I, I say unfortunately, it's for the best that there's no Dark Void. But, um, yeah, really looking forward to that. So, um, I'm planning on being a lot more active on YouTube. Um, I'll go to tournaments and everything. You know, again, like I say, I'll get my day, to, day one invites, you know, or try to, I guess, going to however many tournaments I decide to go to next season. But, hopefully, that means I'm going to be a bit more active here on YouTube as well. So, Really looking forward to that. Um, as well, the uh, NBL is starting again. Um, so Team Cyberbars has been resurrected for uh, you know for the third season as well. So um, you yeah, know the the second most successful NBL team in history <laughs> in the two seasons that has been um, is back, and uh, we are currently drafting Pokemon too. So um, you yeah, know we've got I think we've had three picks so far. So um, three, four. Oh well, no, we've had four picks so far. So. Um, our team is coming along nicely, but that will all get announced um, in due course as, uh, you know, the, the draft picks will be as well, too. So uh, really looking forward to that and getting involved. There's quite a few more teams in there as well, too. So, um, you know, the future is looking quite interesting, really. Um, but, you know, above all, you know, if you do follow me on, on Twitter or got me on Facebook, you know, you know feel free to add me on either. Um, you know, I've been utterly blown back by the support, you know. How many people have liked and commented and congratulated me on my day to invite? You know, I've not uploaded anything for ages. You know, I go to these tournaments and people say hello and people are still so friendly and I, you know, it blows me back how how much support there is. So I do want to, you know, it sounds silly because I know everyone thanks people for all this kind of stuff, but really, you know, genuinely, you know, thank you for the support and and the the contact that you know you, you people have with me. You know, it's it's. Just, you know, beyond anything that I, I would have expected, even still after after these years. So, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, things will get more active in the future and everything too. But, um, you know, thank you for uh, for everything, you know, for, for sticking with me. You know, if you still subscribe to me on YouTube, then uh, thank you very much. But, you know, hopefully, like I'm saying, more videos will come and um, the future will be a bit more interesting, maybe. Because, you know, this channel's been a bit a bit, you know, inactive for a while, hasn't it? So, uh, thank you very much for watching this, guys. You know, stick around, and uh, there'll be more in the future. But, goodbye for now.